So I woke up like 10 minutes ago, so sorry if I sound groggy or tired or whatever, but I checked the tracking on this and it said it was delivered and rushed downstairs and here it is, another big box. So in this video, we're going to be unboxing a Arista DCS 7124SX. People really love using this expanding foam stuff. I have tons of it laying around from the Super Micro we just unboxed. So here's hoping this didn't get damaged in shipping or anything because the packing and everything was kind of light. It's pretty scuffed up on the top, but uh, the front is in good condition. I'll show that on camera when I finish unboxing everything. So it comes with the rack rails, and these just slide into a bracket on the back. They're not really like, you know, high-end rails or anything. And I think that's everything in the box. Single power cord. This has dual redundant power supplies, I should mention. And I think that's it. So you can see the top of it's a little bit scuffed up, but that's fine. We have a, a nice condition Arista sticker on the top. That's nice that that's in good condition. And if we look along the front of it, we have our ventilation. And I really love that honeycomb mesh. That looks really cool, especially on Junipers and Aristas. And we have our rack mounts on the front and then 24 10 gig SFP plus ports. I think there's a command I have to enter to get these to recognize third-party SFP Plus modules. I have a bunch of Unify SFP Plus DAC cables laying around, and I guess if I want to use those, that's how I'll do it. If I move the camera over a bit, we have two management ports. This is our console, and that's pretty self-explanatory how that works. And then on this one, it's either called out-of-band or in-band, but it's the auxiliary management port and that lets you plug it into a separate modem or some other network. So if you lock yourself out of this, such as changing the IP address to something or whatever, you can still access it through that port. And then we also have a USB port, and I think that's mainly for loading like new firmware and whatnot onto the switch. If we take a look at the back side of the switch, we have our four fans, and I think those are N plus one redundant, so one can fail, but the rest three can take over. We also have our power supplies, and I think these are pretty beefy. Let me check. 460 watts on each of them. Like I said, they're redundant, so that's always cool. And I, speaking of cooling, got the front to rear airflow version just because it's cheaper, and this will probably sit on the back of the rack anyway because the front of the rack has a lot more routers and cable management and other stuff like that in it. And... There's just more room for this at the back. So rear to front airflow was probably a better option. And honestly, in my rack, it doesn't matter. You've seen how open it is. And especially when I put it in that one room, I'm not gonna have a cold side and a hot side of that room. I'm just gonna have probably an air conditioner or a fan circulating air. So it doesn't really matter too much, especially because this isn't probably gonna be running full bore 24 seven, kicking out a bunch of heat. If I take one of these, fans out. It's in pretty good condition. It's not really too dusty. Well, I don't see any dust actually. So I think that's it for the hardware tour. I am going to, I guess, also open up the rails. I should mention the rack rails. The way these work is you have the one end on the front that screws into the rack, and then you have a little slide here that goes on the other end. And this just helps support it in the rack. And mine's probably going to be like hanging like this, kind of, kind of sketchy, but I guess that's just how it's designed. So I'm not going to be running this thing in the rack just yet. The rack's in the middle of the basement and everyone watches TV down there. So uh, depending on how loud it is, I might deploy it right away, but I'm probably going to keep it in a separate room with my 2960 and some other louder devices that I like to mess with. And so with that said, I think we can go ahead and uh, fire it up. 
So I have it connected to the Dell with a console cable and I'll actually move that closer so you can probably see a bit better. But I'm gonna reach under the table and flip the switch on the power strip and So it is booting, you can see on the screen there. Decent bit of airflow coming out the front. Oh. Yeah, the XPS does that all the time. I'm gonna switch to something else. I was just getting the, uh, I was just getting the, uh, Macro Pro plugged in. Is the XPS, so don't really know what's up, but I plug into the console port and sounds like the fans are just kind of starting to ramp down. I don't know why those two aren't lit. Let me take the camera off the tripod and looks like it just finished booting. So pretty crazy. It's kind of loud, but I guess. So there was a password on it, uh, if you remember. Maybe I included that, maybe I didn't, but there was a password on it. And I've been looking into how to recover it, and initially I thought I had to insert a flash drive with the config with an image on it, but I don't because I went into, when the switch boots up, you hit Control c and it boots into a pre-boot CLI, uh, pre-CLI, CLI, if you will, and it will uh, ask for command, and you can put in full recover, which it actually doesn't say. You can see uh, if I type in admin here, it doesn't ask for a password, and I turned off zero touch configuration, and um, you can see we have our system here. We have our config and everything. And basically I just did a factory reset on it. So as usual, there is about a month between the last clip and the ending clip of the video. You can see my Arista is sitting up there in nearly the top of the rack. And I have this event panel mainly for aesthetics, so you can just barely see it through there when it's running. And uh, this is the rest of the rack. Ignore that switch. If I go to the back here, you can see my 16XG under it and a shelf where the modem is going to sit. And this is the switch. It's off right now. It's super loud. Don't need it running. And it takes about 80 watts at idle. So that's kind of my first issue here. I was thinking about it. And with all of the kind of purchases I'm doing, and uh, if you watch the 500 subscribers video, I no longer have a job currently. Uh, I just realized this purchase was kind of irresponsible, especially for the lots of money I paid. I think I paid like 260 or something for it. Right now it's also connected using this flaky SFP plus Amphenol cable. And, um, that red tape is because I have a port channel on those two. Uh, that's irrelevant. Basically what I'm bringing up is I'm not sure if I want to keep this. I might resell it because I could probably make $100 profit on it. And it's really just unnecessary right now. I have the 16XG and this is the current uh, situation. I have the fat twins uh, with these two and then the net backup with these switch with these, UDM Pro is going to connect with this, and then the Arista with this. This is the uplink right now, that's going to go away soon. 
and then I have these two extra ports here, and I have these fiber modules for the MacBook Pro and gaming PC once I get this in the closet on the other side of the room. So I have these two extra ports right now, and if I ever want to put a 10 gig card in the R710 and the Xserve that's going to go here at some point, wink wink, cough cough, then I can just plug in with those. And if I end up putting like three 1U servers in here for testing systems, then I can just get another one of these or maybe get the, uh, what is it, the 7050. Like I said, it's loud, it takes a ton of power even at idle, and it's just not necessary to have. But with that said, uh, I think that is going to be it for this video. Uh, I'll talk about this switch further and what ends up happening to it in my network upgrades video, which is coming probably by the end of summer, hopefully. And uh, it'll probably be significantly sooner than that, so look forward to that. But with that said, I think that's going to be it. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.